Services. And so I therefore commend this bill to the House. I'll call Matt King. Oh, it's a real pleasure to speak on the uh, Military Justice Legislation Amendment Bill, second reading. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge and welcome to the class of 2017 our newest MP, Dan Bidwa, who made an exceptional maiden speech a couple of hours ago. And he's going to, um, I think he's going to be a great MP. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Honourable Mark Mitchell. Uh, for bringing the bill to the House, and I'd like to acknowledge the Honourable um, Ron Mark for um, taking it through the, the House. It's an omnibus bill that the purpose of this bill is to update the military justice system and to align it with the criminal justice system in certain respects, including enhancing victims' rights. It amends the Armed Forces Discipline Act 1971, Court Martial Act 2007, and the Court Martial Appeals Act 1953. Now, um, I've got a bit of uh, experience with the criminal justice system, and um, but, but <laughs> um, remember that interjections are meant to be witty. Um, particularly interested. <laughs> that's what the speaker said. Particularly interested in victims' rights, based on my time as a police detective. Um, I felt that the victim um, had no rights; that everything was weighted towards the offender. Um, I can recall many times while I was taking a serious uh, sexual offence case through the court process, uh, it felt like it was myself and the poor victim against the rest. So um, I'm really interested in, in uh, anything that progresses victims' rights. Uh, many a time I felt that it was wrong and many times I felt like chucking it in. Eventually that's why I left the police. I felt a little burnt out and I felt someone else can pick up the load. Thankfully, times are changing and good law is being made to address these issues. Um, part three of the Victims' Rights Act 2002 confers rights on the victims of certain serious, sexual, serious offences or set of a sexual nature that, or that involve violence. The right to be kept informed, to be consulted in respect and, most importantly, to have their views taken into account in respect of decisions around bail. So this legislation seeks to align victims' rights and protections in the military justice system to those in the criminal justice system. And this bill amends some aspects of, this bill also amends some aspects of the procedures of the Court Martial of New Zealand. This bill aligns provisions governing whether an accused is unfit to stand in the military justice system and steps associated with that determination, with the provisions of the Criminal Procedures Mentally Impaired Persons Act 2003. It cleans up some procedural issues relating to court martials. A key improvement, in my view, is the change to the onus of proof. Now, I understand that under the um, Armed Forces Discipline Act, the onus is on the accused to prove, on the balance of probabilities, any excuse, exception, exemption, or qualification that the accused relies on as a defence to a charge. Now, provisions placing the onus of proof on the accused have largely been re removed from the criminal justice system following the decisions of the Supreme Court in Arvory Hanson 2007. There is no good reason for members of the armed forces who are tried under the military justice system to have an onus of proof imposed on them that is not imposed in the criminal justice system. Accordingly, the bill repeals section 3, subsection 2 of the Armed Forces Discipline Act 1971. This, along with the improvements to victims' rights, in my view, are the most important changes to this bill. Accordingly, I commend this bill to the House. Uh, be before I call the, um, the next member, I just want to encourage uh, members uh, who have been in the House for several months now um, that it's the expectation that members will not read speeches, that when they are in the debating chamber that they will actually deliver arguments from notes only. So um, this is the last time I'm going to mention it. The next time I will be uh, stopping members from reading speeches, except for our newest member who, um, who arrived in the House today. OK, I call Louisa Wall. Uh, tēnā koe te mangai o te whare, tēnā katoa. Um, it's my pleasure.